And it's through your hard work and dedication. You have to train. You have to make it work. If it doesn't work, there's a problem. What's up, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 734. My guest today is Shihan John Arujo. I'm Jeremy Lesnick. I'm your host. I'm Whistlekick's founder. I wear a lot of hats over here, but in the context of what we do on the show, I'm the other voice that you're going to hear from. If you want to know more about all the hats that I wear and the hats that everybody else wears and what those result in, go to whistlekick.com. You're going to find everything we're working on over there, including our store. It's one of the places that you can spend some time, maybe find something that you like. Sweatshirts, pants, t-shirts, training programs, stickers, books, protective equipment. There's so much stuff over there. And if you use the code podcast one five on something that you like, it saves you 15% and everybody wins. Everything for this show is on a separate website, whistlekick, martialartsradio.com. We release two brandy new episodes each and every week, all with the goal of connecting and educating and entertaining traditional martial artists worldwide. If you want to help the show and the work that we do, well, you, you got some choices. You can make a purchase. You could follow us on social media. We're at Whistlekick. You could join the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Whistlekick. It's a place to go for that. You can get in as little as two bucks a month and know who's coming up on the show. At $5, you're getting bonus episodes. At $10, you're getting bonus video, free books, free stickers, free shirts, free, free, more, the school owner's mastermind. There's so much stuff. Check it out. Patreon.com slash Whistlekick. But if you want all the ways, the entire list of all the things you can do to help us out in our mission, whistlekick.com slash family. Go check out that page. It is not often that we have a guest on the show who, especially after 730 something episodes, changes my perspective on something I thought I knew. But that's exactly what happens today. I am not going to discolor what you're going to step into by, by hinting at it, because I think it's important that you go in as open-minded as possible. Let's just say that in the same tradition that we've had some folks come on the show and say, yeah, this is the way lots of people do it, but there's another way to do it. And I think it's better. And here's why that is a subject that we tackle on this episode. And I loved it. And I hope you do too. I've got a feeling you will. Hello, sir. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for the end. Of course. Thanks for accepting. Uh, Andrew is very persistent. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. He does a great job in so many ways. And one of those things is just like, hey, 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 you should come on the yeah. show. You should come on the show. Uh, oh, I, I said, maybe uh, I'm, the next thing I'm waiting for is him to knock at my door. <laughs> I don't I don't think he's done that yet, but. Uh, you never know. You never know. You never know. If it's somebody nearby, I can see it happening. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how do you pronounce your last name? I want to make sure Arujo. we get it right. Arujo. Arujo. Yes. Okay. I, I've been called a lot worse, but I'll take Arujo. Okay. Nice. With some phonetic notes. Cool. Well, um, so we've got a decision to make right here. We can either kind of pause and talk about what we're going to do, or we can just roll. Just roll. Just go. Awesome. I'm awesome. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Let's go. So you're an Aikidoka. I am. We got, we got the picture of Ushiba yes. behind you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, uh, go ahead. Right before this. What's that? I did Shotokan karate before okay. this. Okay. That, well, I was about six years old. And, and that was, I, I was going to find a way to ask that question. So you, you made it easy for me. <clears throat> We've had a number of Aikido practitioners on the show over the years. And Aikido seems to be an art that people end up in or start in. It, I do not know very many people who start and remain in Aikido. Correct. Correct. I, I, Absolutely, 100% agree with you. Um, Aikido is, depending on who you're training with, and I'm going to be 
honest with you because Please. I've seen a lot of your 700 podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, especially the one that uh, hitting people is not normal <laughs> or doesn't feel normal. Uh, anyway, so you know that I, I've, I've been watching it since I met you at Bill Wallace's yeah. Terry. Yeah. Um, Aikido is one of those martial arts that either work and or suck. Um, <laughs> and a big controversy on Aikido and um, traditional martial arts. Sure. Um, I started off with Shotokan Karate, and it was a basic Japanese hard style of karate. Yep. Uh, Funakoshi, obviously, master of it. Of I did that for about 10 years. Um, I, I guess I was active and driving my parents nuts. So they said, you ever want a karate, whether you like it or not. Uh, How so old were you when you started? I, I, I did a lot. I was about six, six and a half. Okay. All right. So pretty young. Yeah. Pretty young. Didn't know much. Still don't know much. Um, still learning. Um, so I, at a later age, at about teenage, uh, I was maybe 16 years old. Uh, I watched an Aikido movie and I said, what the heck is that? Um, which was, was it, a, was it a cigar movie? Okay. Yeah. It, it was. I, yeah. I was like, oh, that's, you know, that's whatever. Um, so at the time that I was doing uh, Shotokan, I was also doing judo. My instructor mm. uh, was a judoka also, and he had rank in judo. So on Thursday night, Thursday evenings for two hours, we just toss each other around. Mm. Nice. Uh, toss each other around, chokes, uh, leg locks, arm bars. And it was great. So, you know, I said, you know what? Maybe I just want to do that as a self-defense martial art. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'd like to try it. Uh, my first decision was judo because I loved it. Mm. Um, it was too far. I didn't have a car. I wasn't working yet at 16. And my parents, my father had two jobs. My mother wasn't going to drive me to Boston. There was a, a judo club in Boston. Yep. So the closest thing to me was my instructor's best friend, and father figure in Aikido, which was New Bedford Aikikai, Jack mm. Leonard. And I said, yeah, I'll give it a shot. Um, I did. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I didn't like it at first. Um, I, I, a lot of roles, a lot of getting dizzy. And I said, I, I don't know if this is for me. Yep. Um, and, and and putting some pieces together, if you're doing Shotokan, and if you're doing, no, I, I mean, I, I, I could tell really early on the accent. Massachusetts. Yes. And, and if you're doing Shotokan and you're doing Shotokan in New Bedford, I'm pretty sure I know who you were training with and, you know, great group of people. And, you know, they're, they're solid. Yeah. They are solid yeah. people. Yes. And Aikido is about as opposite as you get. I mean, there, there's Shotokan and then there's this group of people as far as I've experienced. So yes. you're, you're going the other end of the spectrum. I am. Um, so, you know, I, I figured let, let me hang in there and, you know, give it, give it my best and, and see what happens. And, you know, I stuck to it, mm. um, until now I was 16, uh, now I'm 48. So, uh, I, I love it. Uh, here, here, here's my experience with Aikido. Um, and, and you know, the Aikido, a lot of the Aikido community, I've done seminars, uh, I've been in seminars and I've instructed seminars. There is that type of Aikido that is fluffy mm -hmm. and that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest with you because I'm an Aikidoka. Um, and that type of Aikido to me doesn't work. Um, I was used to training a harder style of Aikido, um, pressure testing it. Mm -hmm. um, coming from karate, uh, we don't punch like Aikidokas. Aikidokas do not know how to punch. They do <laughs> not know how to kick. They don't even know how to choke somebody. <laughs> so, you know, when I started, I'm like, uh, we don't punch like that. You know, we, we bring our punch back. Uh, everybody leaves their punch out. And hopefully it's very simple to grab somebody's wrist or arm and take them into a pin or a leg lock or a throw uh, willingly. Um you know, so, um, so it, I mean, Aikido, um, has had its goods at one point. Um, and it, and it, it took, uh, it took it 
in a spiral downward motion uh, these last couple of years. It's mm-hmm. It has a bad rap uh, because I've seen Aikido and I was like, that sucks. That would not work. Um, going back a little bit, I've been mm-hmm. doing law enforcement 20 years. Okay. So uh, when I first tried Aikido, it didn't work like it did in the dojo. Mm. Um, so, and, and you know, it, it's one of those where if you do Aikido, uh, research it. Um, you need to know that that's what you want to do um, and research the instructor. Um, they have a lot of Aikido schools. That's a big commodity. That's a big cult. It's like a church atmosphere in there. It's very spiritual. Um, and if you get mugged out in the street, uh, because the world is really crappy out there, uh, as you know, you're not going to wait from the angels from the sky to come down and help you. And, you know, a lot of Aikido schools are built with the love, peace, and harmony. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what Aikido means. But uh, there's post-war pre-war Aikido, um, and there's this last fourth generation of Aikido that are doing this big circular soft movement where everybody's invited, and I get it. O-sensei wanted everyone to do it. Mm. Uh, so, and, and I get that part because he was older, an older, man, an older senior citizen man that was brittle, that was in his 80s, that was dying of cancer. Um, you know, I've heard from a very good source that was involved with the Aikikai organization that back then, uh, right before Osensei had passed away, a few years before he passed away, he wanted to go back into that pre-war, uh, stuff, the Aikijitsu, Daituru Aikijitsu, Mm -hmm. um, because that's what worked. It worked in the war, but it doesn't work now. What is the problem then? Is it the new generation instructors? Uh, it, you know, it, it, it could be, it definitely could be. I've trained with different organizations. Some are better than others. Some are worse than others. Um, yeah, I, I, have, I have a theory and I'd like to bounce it off you because you're the first person that I've been able to talk to who I felt was appropriate to, to voice this theory. Yeah, both, most both of us are. know, most of us who've been training a while know that there's Tai Chi, you know, and, and, and then there's, there's Tai Chi. And my understanding, Tai Chi is not the fat, even the effective stuff. It's not the fastest path to an effective self-defense repertoire. And so you get a lot of people who start and they learn, let's say, short form and they fade away Mm -hmm. and they know enough. They start teaching it to other people and it becomes, people start to think that's what it is. I have long wondered if... Aikido was something similar that you start with the, the slow, the gentle, the large, beautiful, graceful movements. And a lot of people just didn't spend enough time there in, in the early generations to get to the next step. I have to agree with you. Okay. Um, there's, there's Aikido, mm-hmm. Saki Aikido. Because I'm an Aikidoka, so I can, I can verify that. <laughs> the big circle movements, and there's rock and roll Aikido. I'm going to take your head off, Aikido. Um, the pre-World War stuff, the, the, what I'm used to. When I started Aikido, it was a very hard, rigid, robotic form of Aikido. Mm. I got my butt handed to me. I got bumps, I got bruises, I hurt. My joints ached and I was young and I was able to take it, but it, it hurt. So my theory is if it hurts, it works. Mm-hmm. If you kick me in the face and I don't move, it's going to hurt or you're going to knock me out or break something. Right. Uh, so yeah, it, it, it is. Uh, so you, you have Aikido and you have Aikido. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, like, like Tai Chi, um, and like other form of arts, if you're doing this type of Aikido, don't call it a martial art if you're preaching the books, if you're preaching the spirituality of Aikido. 
I get it. I understand it. I'm not much of a book reader unless there's nice pictures in it. Uh, a lot of throwing and yeah. so, so forth. Um, I did read it, some of Osensei's uh, philosophy mm-hmm. and, and I understand it. I have felt this key power that people in general, uh, I'm talking about Aikikai general Aikido. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I get what they mean. I felt the key power. Mm-hmm. Key is not what people think it is, like on YouTube. I get thrown by my sensei and he throws me with his key six feet back. It, it, that's not key. That doesn't work like that. I felt key. Um, it's your, your core power, breaking your balance. Um, it has a lot to do with, with uh, body mechanics. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I get that part. But people think that with this key that they're trying to find this, this, uh, this, um, I don't know, this magic bean, uh, it's not going to happen. It's through your hard work and dedication. You have to train. You have to make it work. If it doesn't work, there's a problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it doesn't work, you need to be comfortable in asking your instructor why it's not working. Um, you need you need options. Uh, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which I've done, I'm not ranked in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And I don't teach it by any means, but I do use it in my techniques as an option. Mm-hmm. Um, if you know, you, you, you get off the technique, you, you do it bad. Uh, it doesn't work. Uh, it's not applicable. Um, give your students options. If you're by yourself with that one person, take them to the ground. Or if he takes you to the ground, what are you going to do on your back? What are you going to do with, with, with whatever ground control you have? So I teach ground control also. Neon belly, uh, shrimp and owl, mm. uh, triangle choke. Um, I, I teach all that because I did learn the basics of Aikido. I did cross train. I still cross train with uh, uh, jujitsu people, um, nice. which is great. And and I, I believe that if somebody wants to do Aikido that's trained in an, another martial art, um, I think it's better for them. Um, so if you come from a karate background or Krav Maga or Jeet Kune Do or a, a different martial art, I think it's good to check out Aikido and see what it's got for you. Um, so th- this kind of connects back to one of the, the first things we started talking about, this idea that so few people start, seeming to me, start and remain in Aikido. And is, it, is, is that why? It's that they need another piece to make uh, it the ne- that next level? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, you know, I, I did Aikido. Uh, I trained in Aikido extensively f- five, maybe six days a week, huh. two hours a day. For 10 years. Um, there was a seminar coming up. Uh, Seagal was putting out uh, during, you know, the, the earlier movies between Above the Law and Hard to Kill mm-hmm. uh, in his ranch. Uh, so I signed up for it online. I sent my money and it fell through because mm-hmm. of Hollywood and s- s- things that were going on with him. Uh, so I said, well, my, my next, next best thing to do is seek out maybe his top students. I, I don't know. Uh, I want to check out this Aikido, see what it's all about, see if it is what it is in the movies, um, see if it's this brutal style of Aikido. Um, you know, it looked like it had like an old style of Daituru Jiu-Jitsu, Aiki Jiu-Jitsu. Mm-hmm. So I did. Uh, I, I seeked out um, a couple of guys. Actually, my first seminar was in Florida with this uh, with a Shihan called Luis Santos. And he was one of his black belts. Mm-hmm. Um, and I checked it out. I trained the weekend. It felt like I trained for a month. It was intense. It was brutal. Um, you know, compared to what I did for 10 years, not even close. I thought I just started Aikido. Um, so it was kind of odd. I'm was like, it Whoa. was it the intensity? Was it the level of education and competency? Were you training 22 hours a day? Like, what was different? Um, the the intensity, okay. uh, the power behind the technique. Um, it was very direct. It didn't have big circles. Mm. Uh, the different applications um, behind the techniques was different, significantly different than what I was used to. Uh, with my application applying, let's say, in a Minagi, a Kodigaisha wrist, out, turn, throw, um, it was 
very, very different, intense, and it hurt. And it mm. worked uh, because I came from that karate background. So, you know, I, I wanted to first kind of like go in with an open mind and just test it out and mm. kind of feel it. And, oh, yeah, I felt it. Um, it. It was different. Another thing, too, is that when I was doing Aikido, for the, la- for the 10 first years that I did Aikido, never, ever did I do or seen any combinations, jab, counter punch, mm. um, you know, jab, front kick, side kick, roundhouse kick, spinning back kick, spinning back fist, never. Uh, I questioned some instructors. And they just brushed me off. I wasn't supposed to ask that question. I wasn't, uh, it wasn't my place. Or they would say, well, th- you know what? This is not for you. The questions that you have, I can't help you with. It's not for well. I've been in Aikido for four years now. Mm-hmm. How come uh, nobody throws a jab? Because I, you can't catch a jab. You can't catch these punches. Yeah. You know, you, it's, it's hard. Realistically. Were they, do you think yeah. they were hiding information or they didn't have the answers? Uh, you know, most of them did not have the answers. Mm. Um, so they, they falsified a lot of facts from, uh, what, what I was doing. Um, mm. and I wanted to know why it didn't work. Uh, well, you know, you have to train more, you have to come more, you got to stop questioning it. It works. It works for me all the time. Well, yeah, you're the sensei. I have to fall for you. I got to make this work for you. Yeah. You're the sensei. Of course it works. You know, because I'm going with it. Most of the time, you have to go with it to learn it, obviously, and choreograph all these techniques. But when I resist or when I'm with my senpai, my senior student, and I try to stop it, how come they tell me not to stop it? Because it's not working. Mm. Uh, some of them will, some of them did brutally throw me, which was great. Uh, but they did not like that. Um, mm. because question them you just had to do it so it's like how many years do i have to do this for this to work um so when i when i did this um this tension aikido which uh i was told when i when i started doing this tension aikido there is no type of aikido uh but there is they have iwama style they have asu style they have this style you know yoshinkan style shotokan style uh, Tamiki Aikido. So there is styles you can tell. Um, so when I studied this tension Aikido, um, it was cool because I can ask the questions. Mm. Uh, it was very open. Um, my first technique when I got on the mat was jab, front kick. Never did that in my life. Never, never did that in my life in Aikido. The the last, right. the first, sorry, the first ten years I was in it. I was like, holy crap, what do I do now? And I kick, punch, done. I saw, I saw air, boom. It was, it was great. We were doing, you know, techniques from sidekick, from roundhouse kicks, from combinations. I had no idea what I was doing. And I said, I need to do this. I so need this, to learn. This goes back to your, your Shotokan origin. Yeah. You know, yeah. this, this whole body of, of stuff that you recognize there was a gap, you didn't know how to defend against it, and now they're, they're, they're filling in the pieces. It's not just yes. throw a punch and leave yep. it out. You know what? I didn't mind going to the ground. I didn't mind trying to fight from that. I, mm. I, I wanted to learn that. I wanted to you know, learn that defensive techniques from this kick punch, or if you take me down to the ground, what do you do? Um, it was great because now I'm like, okay, I'm in, I, I was used to... Uh, sparring and and that's that's what i wanted you know uh we we're a little bit more violence a little bit more powerful um more quick uh the timing was precise uh even in shotokan so i love this you know so after the 10th year of, of my general traditional aikido my sensei had, my original sensei had passed away so i seeked out these groups like mm. louis Sam- and then I, I trained, uh, I went to Taos, New Mexico under Craig Dunn. Craig Dunn was one of Seagal's students, and he was also an Above the Law. Mm. Uh, and, uh, he was a hard to kill in, in the uh, liquor store. He was, uh, he was okay. the guy thrown around, um, his stuntman. And uh, Elliot Freeman from St. Louis, Matsuroka Sensei, which is Japanese uh, top student. He was with 20 years. Uh, that did all the four 
was in all the four first films that he uh, was in. Mm. Uh, he was uh, he was okay. He was a stunt person to him. So I seek these guys out, trained them. They were great. I, I'm very very thankful for learning what I what I did, and I, I'm glad I did that transition because um, it, it, the transition, if you want to do it, if this if that's what you want to do, you're open to that. You got to be open minded to it sure. uh, because it's it's a lot different, um, and people tend to shy away, I guess, um, easier terms when they see that type of Aikido and go, oh, he's not doing Aikido. He's just hurting people. He's just mean. Um, but, you know, I, I, I've been at seminars and taught seminars that I, it feels like I'm taking them from their comfort zone and I'm, I'm applying these techniques for real to make it work, to help them, to just say, hey, there's another option. There's another... I'm giving you guys a, 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 a different, uh, different options, different style of Aikido. Um, let's try this. Um, and they seem to kind of wander off and kind of go get some water, come back on the mat and say, Hey, can I see that again? Can I, you know, it, and it gets frustrating because you know, when they, when they are doing it, they really don't want to do it. And they revert back to the big circle mm-hmm. kind of throw. And it's like, okay, so I'll go into a next technique, a next technique, and it gets frustrating. So, you know, I guess at that point, through those seminars I was teaching or even training with these people, and by all means, great people, um, great attitude on the map, but they're not about the violence. I'm not being violent, but I know being in law enforcement, this is what works. Now, when did you when did you start law enforcement? I started in 1996. Okay. Um, so I I ended it in 2017. Okay. So 96, you would have been 20. Yep. Okay. So yep. I went from you, being a state constable to a bail enforcement agent. Okay. To campus police. So I did it all. Chase people on warrants. Uh, I did it all. And I'm trying. I, I'm trying to build the timeline here. So, you know, six to sixteen ish Shotokan. Did you go? And you went right into Aikido. So you had a few years of Aikido before oh, law yeah. enforcement. I, I went into Aikido. Okay. Uh, right after sixteen, um, I did have uh, some experience in Aikido, but very few techniques worked for me, and I was very very frustrated. And and that's that's where I wanted to get to was. You know, if you'd been in Aikido for six months when you when you start law enforcement and, and you're trying things out, it's easy to, to to push back and say, you know what? Yeah, I just I need more time. This isn't working. It's on me. But four years in, especially with your background, understanding, you know, where in, say, a karate school you might be in four years, one would expect you, that your stuff would, uh, if if trained well have some chance of, of working at least a good chunk of the time. Very little. But it wasn't happening. It wasn't happening. My karate helped me a lot. Mm-hmm. The self-awareness in Aikido um, helped me. Mm-hmm. Um, the movements, obviously, but the big circle stuff, the fluffy stuff, um, come-alongs, some of the ambas that we did, because I really forced it and, and worked at it and trained every day. Uh, they worked, but a lot of the other techniques didn't work. And I asked the questions. I, I wasn't getting the answers. I was getting I was ready to quit. I was ready to try mm. something else. And I said, it worked. This worked in the war. Why isn't it working here? I'm not in war. You know, I'm just locking people up, chasing people down. Um, but you know, in, in, in Aikido, I find that a lot of instructors that are these six, seven times and rank to me doesn't mean anything. Um, if, if you can, if you can put it on the map, I don't care if you, you're a brown belt, blue mm-hmm. belt. Um, if you, if you can put it on the map and prove it to me, I'm good. Let's go. I'll, I'll be a first student. I don't care if you're a six down or seven down. That, that, you know, it's not going to help you on the street. My last rank was 2006. I've never been ranked since. Um, it's not important to me, you know, uh, people that I have to prove is my students. I have a small group of students that are very selective 
And uh, the reason why I do that is because Aikido could be so complex mm. that you need that small group to teach it and understand it like, like I understand it now. Before, I just, I just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't understand it. Um, I could do the movements, but I had these guys that were even bigger than me. They were just, get, they were just throwing themselves. I'm like, dude, you need to work with me. Like you're throwing yourself. I'm not even touching you. And this is like fake. This is not working for me. And again, I'm not trying to put Aikido down. I'm not trying to put any martial art down because what I do works. I've been cross, I cross train, yeah. I make Aikido work. Uh, this tension Aikido is, is a lot different. It's brutal. Um, and it's not the peaceful stuff that people think this is what it is uh, because it doesn't work. Some of these instructors are going back to uh, that I met that are six downs, fifth downs, fourth downs, seventh downs. They've never been into a confrontation or a fight in their life. How do they know that this works in the street? Mm. Yeah, it works right here on the map because I have to respect you and go with it somewhat. Even if you tell me to resist it, you got 30 people on the map. I don't want to, I'm not going to embarrass you on the map uh, if it doesn't work. And you're going to say, you know, I did that once, but with a senior student that was in a seminar mm -hmm. and we're, we're applying a Nikio wrist, a, a wrist lock. And I asked him if I can resist some, and we were both black belts. And he said, oh yeah, yeah. It works all the time. No problem. He was mm -hmm. as hard as you want. Yeah, it, it didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't. So the sensei came over and he's like, oh, what's going on? Yeah, you're not doing it right. You got to move your body this way and that way. And obviously, I went for the sensei um, because it's, it's just part of respect. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it, you know, he, the student talked to me after that. We became best friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, he became one of my students later on. Oh, and cool. uh, he says, well, I, I don't understand why. Is it because you're stopping me? Is it because you know what I'm doing? You know, sometimes it is, but sometimes most of the time it isn't. It's because you suck. You know, if, if I'm throwing punches and I'm not hitting you, am I really not throwing those punches to connect with you? Or are you really good at bobbing and weaving? So, you know, what, what is it? You know, let, let's go ahead and test it. Um, I, I've gone ahead. I have headgear here. Most of Aikido schools don't have mm. headgear. Okay. Let's test this, see if it works. You know, I have, I have a Saturday monthly class with my senior students. I, we have Saturday classes all the time. We have five days a week. But mm. one, one Saturday class a month, I have my students put on their gear. Let's go. Let's test this. And, you yes. know, sometimes you get a bloody nose. Sometimes you don't. All in fun, not to be mean. No, oh, no, but you, you get to but a point. You want to know that what you're doing is, and if it is, is going to work. Let's get on the ground and do a straight armbar. Let's go ahead and do a guillotine. Let's do a Kimura. Let, let's, let's do a re rear naked choke. Let's get into that. And I teach my senior students that ground defense techniques, mm -hmm. uh, finger locks. Um, it, it's, it, you, you have to be very open to that stuff, it's, you know, especially if you're doing my kind of Aikido. Um, you know, if you're coming here to do traditional Aikido, which I, I do. Mm -hmm. But I have a different approach to those techniques, a different application. It's not this big love, peace, and harmony, and we're all hugging each other and, and ballet and we're dancing in here. I don't dance. I like to rock and roll. I like to <laughs> people out. I like getting hit, and I like hitting people. I know it's not natural to you, but I I like that. I enjoy you know? it, too. I like kicking people in the head. So. It, it, yeah, yeah, like Bill Wallace, you know? It sounds mean. It sounds violent. It sounds maybe not Aikido ish, like that love, peace, and harmony type of Aikido, but it, it is Aikido. This is what I'm doing. Um, and, and I, I love it. Um, and, and so be it. You know, I, sure. I just, I just can't falsify my students. If they it. have a question right from the get go, sure, let's go. Let, let's try it. It's not working for a reason. Let's go do it on me. I want to see what you're doing wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Yeah, it's been tough. Your with, description, with and then you, you you reminded me again with finger locks. The description you're using in contrast with, let's call it, common Aikido, what, yeah. what most of us have experienced with Aikido, reminds me of, if, if, if you gave me that description, you know, tight, smaller, reminds me of small circle jujitsu. Yes. It makes me think well, of Wally J. Wally J, yes. So how yes. similar 
is perhaps someone's experience with that body of movement to what you're talking about. Similar. Similar to Daituru Aiki Jiu-Jitsu, Daituru Aiki Jiu-Jitsu, and small circle jiu-jitsu. We, we do a lot of things that small circle jiu-jitsu has. Hmm. A lot of And a lot of my students will say, hey, sensei, I, I saw I saw a YouTube video. I'm like, ah, don't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I know it sucked. It didn't work. These guys are flying. They're not touching anybody. People are, people are dying, right? Yeah. No. I, I watched this guy, small circle jiu-jitsu, Wally J. I'm like, yep, he's awesome. We did those finger locks. He's almost breaking the fingers. I'm like, yeah, that's that's what we're doing. Yes, it's all part of that. And Osensei did that. He 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 did that, and he blended this Aikido. Um, so everybody can do it, and I, and I get it. You know, elderly people can do it, but I, I don't teach Tai Chi. When I get to a point that I can't do this, I'm going to leave it for my younger crowd to do it. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, I can't kick ass at 80 years old. I carry a gun, but guess what? You take over. You know, I'll carry my cane. I'll carry my gun. You know, we'll be good to go. Lock and load. Right. But, you know, some people, you know, think that, you know, if, if you're starting to get away from that self-defense, uh, you need to stop and probably have your students teach, your younger crowd teach, because you don't want to falsify anybody. It, it's a bad world out there. I know from the background I've had, um, you know, I don't mind headbutting you. I don't mind going into a clinch with you. But let's go. And and I teach that, you know. And but people have seen my keto and go, uh, I didn't that's not what I saw on YouTube. I'm like, well, it's either this or you can go to that. It's either Tai Chi or Tai Chi. Because a lot of people are looking for that, and that's okay. You know, we, we, we talk often on the show that, you know, your reasons for training don't have to be the same as other people's reasons for training, but your reasons for training should be reflected in what and who with and where and how you train. It's, it's Budo, martial arts, true Budo. I need to teach that. If I turn this into a religious type, key type, Qigong type of school, uh, I, I can't teach that. I might as well shut the place down. I just, I just, I can't do it. I, mm-hmm. I can't do it. Maybe when I get older, uh, I, I maybe, uh, maybe I'll go into Tai Chi when I can't move. I'll mm-hmm. sit in the chair, you know, do that type of thing with my wife sitting drooling with me. Uh, but right now I, I just, I can't, I can't do that. This is what I teach. This is my Aikido. Um, I, I've had people here that have military background, law enforcement background, and they can't believe it. They're like, oh, you know, a lot of people say, oh, don't, don't train Aikido. It sucks. I says, it does suck. Depending on who you're training with, you have to explore. You have to do your background mm-hmm. checks on these instructors. Uh, where do they come from? What's their background? Um, have they ever been into a confrontation or fight? I mean, you don't have to ask, You don't have to be rude. You don't have to be mean and ask them that. But you should be able to ask questions. And if that instructor shies away from that, you know what? Don't be in that school. You know, um, I've had, I had a guy here that was very high in, in Krav Maga that trained at my other dojo, loved it, mm. left, went to Carolinas, got his black belt down there, and he has a school down there of Aikido. Uh, so, yeah, I've, I've trained all kinds. I've, I've even trained people that do executive bodyguard work. Mm. And with that type of training, I have a different teaching with that. Um, so, uh, it's a, it's a little different, um, but this is this is what I teach. I don't teach the fluffy, beautiful circular motion, church going Aikido. Uh, sometimes, uh, Jeremy, I find that a lot of these schools love to teach that stuff and love to do that because they have thirty plus students at probably you know a hundred plus dollars a month. Mm-hmm. And it's paying their, their monthly salary or their weekly salary, plus it's paying their, their dojo. And that's how they have to stay in business. And plus, they have to give out rank and charge for that. So, And I get that, but I work a full-time job. Unfortunately, this is my evening full-time job. This is what I love to do. This is my expensive hobby. Um, and and I, I just, 
I, I can't do it because of the money. I just can't. I get it. So let's let's take uh, a concept that was pretty important. Uh, you said about 10 years into Aikido, this recognition that there was more and you hadn't found it. You, you, you were aware that there was, there was something missing and you sought it out. Are you still seeking out? Is there still more that you're looking for? Are you trying to go go ahead? I think you know where I'm going. Here's the thing. Um, I tell my students, they laugh. I have, uh, I have some senior citizens in my school and they run circles around a lot of younger, the guys, which is great. I wish at that age I can, I'll be able to do that. Mm. Um, I tell my students, listen, I don't know anything. I don't know it all. Um, I know a grain of sand at the beach mm. and they're like, well, that's a little bit that grain. Um, so I'm still learning. And I learn from my students. Um, I still cross train in judo, BJJ. Mm. Love it. Um, I love to practice um, and and I love to learn. So yeah, I'm learning every time. I'm always seeking that a little bit better opportunity, um, the little bit better technique, a little bit more finesse. So I'm always trying to polish that brass to make it shinier and shinier. So yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and you know, some of my students are like, Hey, can, can I go to this seminar? Can I go to this seminar? I'm like, absolutely. You know, I used to belong to, and you've probably heard of it, the Aikikai, uh, mm-hmm. world what is humble dojo in Japan for 10 years. Um, so, and, and I was in that group and asked the questions and wanted to open the dojo and, at that point, nobody wanted to help you. They wanted money, mm-hmm. money, 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 money. Rank, oh yeah, we'll give you fifth down. It's you know twenty five grand. What? So um, I resigned from the Aikikai, mm-hmm. went into uh, joined the Inter- Independent uh, Martial Art Association. So that way, I'm independent, but wouldn't be independent. So I would have some backing to my knowledge, to my rank. Uh, so I did that. So that way my students could go to organization A, B, or C, or this other organization, one, two, and three. So they can pick and choose because being under the Aikikai, depending on what organization or federation you have, because I have my own, um, you can't train an organization one, two, and three if you belong to A, B, and C. Hmm. They frowned upon that. And if you do go there and Somebody knows about it. It's like, oh, it's it's not a good deal. Why did you go there if we have these seminars or I can teach you this? And don't go to that school. It's like, listen, it's all Aikido. Learn from everybody. You know what? There's a Krav Maga seminar going on. Go ahead. Go for it. Tell them, tell them you're new. You know, you've done, you're in Aikido or, you know, and, and just learn. If you, There's a Jeet Kune Do coming up in Boston or, or a Filipino knife fighting or stick fighting. Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. That's why we do the uh, Terry Dow seminar. There's a bunch of different groups. It's great to learn. Go for it. You know, don't have to ask me. You're here. I know you're coming back. You know, I, I, I have confidence in that. I have no problem. People, some of the schools, you know, you have these Kempo schools, another great karate people. I, I like, Ed, I love Ed Parker's system of 5.0, going into his karate and going into groundwork. Love mm-hmm. it. Absolutely love it. Great, great martial artist. Uh, some of the Kempo camaraderie cannot go to this Kempo school because they fall into this. Uh, do, other you, do you mean Speakman? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Just amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, love, love him. Love his martial art. Love his karate. Love his, his 5.0 system. Yeah. Love it. Um, if, if, if there was any around here, absolutely. I'd go for it. Mm. Even though I've heard you know, he's a great guy too. Oh, he's awesome. But some of these Kempo guys in, in the area, they go to this guy's school. Oh, yeah, you can't go to this guy's seminar because he doesn't belong to us. He sucks. It's like, what? you know, it, it, it kind of sucks hearing that. It's like, you know, and, and Aikido is the worst for that. Uh, it, which, it, seems, it, which is so ironic. It, it's a lot. It's this love. Yeah. This love, peace and harmony. And I'm like, 
hello. Unless you, like, unless you're so, not part of our group. Right. It's like you, 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 you get, you go to here, you go to there and it's like, Oh, uh Oh, that person's from that USAF. You shouldn't be in the ASU style or shouldn't be here. It's like, guys, this is not a bitch. Test, and I want to train. I want to learn. Show me. I'm opened up to learn different applications. Give me different options to apply these techniques uh, to better myself. And, and it's tough. That's why I left that whole organization, camaraderie and church gathering, Aikido type of group. And mm. you know what? It's great. That's what you want to do. It's, it, that's, I'm not downing that. But if you want to do a martial art, do not, if you want to do a self-defense martial art, true Budo, don't do that Aikido. It's not going to work, period. If, if you want the exercise, uh, if you want the movement, go ahead, do it. Um, will, will it work after 10 years? Will it work on the typical drunk on the street, belligerent person on the street? Maybe you can Aikido talk yourself out of it, possibly. Try to talk out of it, get your butt and run and get in the car and take off. That will work. Yeah. Uh, on a typical drunk, after a few years of doing Aikido, that traditional general Aikido, possibly, depending on who you're training with or what type of hardness, what type of training you're doing, maybe it will work. Uh, you have to seek out, uh, uh, if you want to do real Aikido, true Aikido, you have to seek out. You possibly have to go through a couple of schools and seek it out before you say, okay, this is what I'm looking for, uh, especially for self-defense. Hmm. So it, it's, 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 it's a tough, Aikido is a tough community uh, because Aikido has gotten a bad name uh, these last probably 10 years, I want to say. And, and you got to make it real. You got to work um, and, and you got to be true to students, yeah. period. So here's a question, you know, you, you've brought up the, the bad rep that Aikido has garnered over the last chunk of years and no small part because cell phones and video and the internet and the ability to show things. And, you know, anybody who's spent time in the martial arts should understand that there are good and bad variants of that anything. I, I'm sure I, I could show you know, give me enough time, I'll find a, a terrible school in every style, and I can find a great one yes. in every style. Yeah. Does it bother you when people trash Aikido? Absolutely not. Okay. I had a feeling that, that you would say that. Absolutely not, because I trash Aikido. <laughs> I, I trash it in a good way and in a bad way. Hmm. Because there is really... You know, and I, I talked to Andrew about this and I told him I will keep my my tone and my language and my nice, peaceful, loving. I appreciate uh, that. At, at, a, at a certain level that yeah. we can not have to beep anything out. Um, Aikido, you know, uh, there's a lot of schools in the area that um, I want to say in a 50 mile radius of me um, that need improvement. Mm. Uh, nice way to say it. Uh, I wouldn't mind helping these people out. I wouldn't even come, I wouldn't even mind training with them and just working with them, even privately, mm. even if they didn't want to, you know, mention they didn't want people name. to know. Yeah. They don't want people to know. Absolutely. Come lock the doors. Nobody needs to know anything. Mm. Uh, I, I, you know, I've given even, uh, ranked the people and had them start their own, Aikido dojos because nobody else would back them. And I'm like, these guys are awesome. One guy in Tension Aikido uh, that I won't name that you've probably seen on YouTube everywhere. Mm. Um, he's got a great haircut, just like ours. And I, I said, absolutely, go for it. Ruffle whatever feathers you have. You're amazing. You're strong. You know what you're doing. You know what you're talking about. You have a good background, strong mm -hmm. background in Aikido and other martial arts. And he did it. And he's on his nice. own. He's doing his own thing. Um, and I, I don't mind. I, I don't mind helping people out. I didn't get the help. Um, I didn't get the help. I just did it on my own. I, I, I rented this raggedy old uh, 
space that was probably almost 2,000 square feet uh, that was in a mill, rundown mill on the fourth floor. I, would, I walked up the stairs. There was no light except in that spot. And there was pigeons flying around that I had to kind of dodge. I'm, I'm like, oh, maybe my karate is going to work here in my Aikido movement. And you know what, Jeremy? I was paying 100 bucks a month. Oh, brilliant. To stop. Yeah. So, so qu- un- unrelated, but a question because I, I have a theory. How many posts in the middle of the room were there? Oh, uh, there was like six. Every martial arts school has, has a few posts in the most annoying places. Yes. And somehow every school I train at, almost every school I train at, high rank is usually like right next to the post. They get pushed yep. in the corner. I don't, I don't know why, but it always yeah. happens. Yeah, that's right. I didn't get any help. So, I, yeah. you know... I, I don't mind helping somebody if they seek mm-hmm. it out. Um, nice. Even the other dojo, even the other Aikido schools, if they want to um, steal some technique or what. Yeah, absolutely. You're not stealing. Go ahead. Videotape it. I don't mind. Should what you do and what they do have two different names? I mean, you're, you're, you're defining it. You're using, you know, kind of an adjective tension Aikido, you know, it's a, a flavor, but at the macro level, should it be something different? If they're not teaching, oof, this is a good question. If they're not, I, I want to make it as peaceful as I can. Mm. If those are the schools, uh, I don't doubt their skills. Um, I'm just doubting on being street smart and street self defense in the real world. If those people, are not teaching true Budo and are not welcoming students to questions and giving them answers that they need to hear, Mm -hmm. not what you want to tell them, then they should not call it Aikido. They should not call it Aikido. Um, It's just me. I mean, be happy in what you do and, and, and train hard. Uh, and 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 earn your ranks because nowadays you can go. Oh, I want a blue belt in this, so I want a black belt in this. Twenty five bucks, okay? I'm a black belt and I can teach. Mm. Yeah, big deal. <laughs> um, but you know, and I've seen those videos where some of these guys come to these dojos and say, "Okay, let's roll." And you go, uh, I, I, uh, I, "I don't want to roll." Well, where'd you get your rank? Uh, I, I I went to this small village in China and I. And I got this rank out of, you know, Dr. Kim and, you know, they're embarrassing them on YouTube. Um, but yeah, man, you, you gotta, you gotta be true to your students and, and people coming in because you're, you're open to the public and people see that, you know, if, if I would, if I had back in the day, the internet and I saw what Aikido was like today, I wouldn't do Aikido. Mm-hmm. I would not do Aikido. I'd be doing something else. Um, so yeah, the I, impact I, I, of the internet on martial arts and what people train, how yeah. they train has been nothing yeah. short of astounding. Yeah. And it's, it's forced, I think a lot of people to take a step back and recognize that their why wasn't reflected in their what, you know, there have been a lot of people. I mean, I, I'm thinking of, of some of the folks that we've had on the show specifically coming out of the karate world who have said, you know what? Yeah, we, you can make it work, but you gotta, you gotta do some things a little bit differently. We gotta go back kind of in the same way that you're talking about. And so you, you've got these different flavors, you know, sport karate and traditional application based karate and everything in between. And I think that's awesome. But we've got to be honest, kind of as you're saying, we've got to be honest about what you're doing and why you're doing it and not snowball on your students. You know, I, 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 I went, now that you said the sport karate, you know, I, I did Shorokan and then we went into uh, some, uh, some sparring with other groups and mm-hmm. trained at other Shorokan schools and they didn't do things like we did. Mm-hmm. So I wish Aikido had, you have sports Aikido. 
you know, traditional Aikido. You know, like judo. Judo, you have your judo, you have your sports judo, and you have your street judo. Like, you know, like BJJ, you have your sports BJJ, and you have your kick butt MMA BJJ. Right. What do you want to do? So, you know, um, yeah, that that um, th- that's another you know uh, option people would have if they wanted to do that. And all it would take is Aikido practitioners. Or, and, and really, we can make the same generalization about any martial art. You know, we're talking about Aikido primarily today. But if people were just willing to go to other places, to cross train, to hang out with others, to absolutely to just kind of break those barriers a little bit. So it, it becomes a lot harder to hide things when you've got more examples. I agree. Uh, here's, here's one example, uh, traditional Aikikai Humble Dojo in Japan, mm-hmm. world's biggest organization. So you have their family, the U S Shiba family. So you've seen Doshu, which is the person that runs the organization. Mm-hmm. You have his son that now runs the school. If you see all his demos on every single demonstration from five, six years ago to updates now, they're all the same. Nothing has changed. Mm. It's like clockwork. So I think they want to keep this originality, I guess, in the family to keep going this way. But I think, and, and, you know, I'm not Japanese. I'm not part of that family. But I think they has, the Aikido has to be revamped. Aikido has to has to change. Uh, it has to evolve. And I'm evolving all the time. You have to evolve. Mm. Can't stay the same all the time. Sometimes change is good. Change is better. Better yourself. Make it, make it better for you. Make it, make it more practical. I, I, think, I think that could happen. And I think it would take a movie. I think it would take someone on the order of like a... Uh, who, whoever the, the Tony Jaa or the Iko Uwais of Aikido today is. Yeah. You know, that, 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 that's the person. Yeah. Let's go, Jeremy. I'm ready. It's rock and roll. Awesome. I, <laughs> I, I don't quite have the money to put together that kind of a yeah, movie. No, no. If I did, I would love to, cause that'd be a heck of a lot of fun. You know, I think I a think lot I, of us, you know, you, you've only got a couple of years on me. I remember the first time I saw above the law, we all had this <gasps> moment when we saw yeah. Seagal at that time period, you know, to, to watch it now for the first time, it doesn't have the same impact, but then it was mind blowing because we hadn't seen anybody move in that way at that time. And nobody's this- no, no, there's very few schools that are teaching that kind of Aikido. I'm not going to even j- mention tension Aikido, that kind type of Aikido, yeah. very few schools. I'm one of them. And there's like a handful of schools and it's sure. It's too bad because people like want to seek out Aikido, maybe because of that. And they go seek out this Aikido and they go, that was horrible. It wouldn't surprise me if, you know, if we take a step back and look at it, say nationally, regionally, that there are probably more schools than, than we know about like that. Because, as you said, the broader Aikido community doesn't want to associate. Yep, exactly. They don't. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's, it's not in their comfort zone because of what they've been doing all the years of, of that soft stuff. I mean, yeah, we have, you know, mo- most, most martial arts, cause I've trained a few, we have to choreograph a lot of the techniques to know where I'm going, how I'm falling. got to start somewhere. Uh, before something breaks. Yeah. Before something breaks or snaps. Um, even my beginners, I have to start them off somewhere. Um, most Aikido schools don't do strikes. They do common strikes, Shomenuchi, Yoka Minuchi, but strikes, jab, counter punch, front kick, blocks. Stuff that they might actually see. Yes, roundhouse kicks, back kicks, deflections. Mostly 99% of Aikido schools, unless it's schools like mine, don't teach deflections. Mm. Like sticky, they don't teach that. And it's in Aikido, but they don't teach it because maybe their instructors didn't know about it. They were never taught. So it's, it's, it's tough. 
Aikido is a, uh, uh, is, is a tough thing if you're seeking that out. If, you, if you're seeking true Budo Aikido. So what's coming next? You know, what's going on with you and martial arts over the next few years? Um, hopefully get bigger and expand it. Yes. Um, yeah, looking forward to that. Bringing some new students in. Um, I know COVID, since COVID, um, a lot of schools kind of like had to change things. Um, and believe it or not, I didn't change much. Uh, we, we only closed when we were mandated to close through the state. So what happened was um, the kids, I had the kids only come back when the schools were operating and they were allowed to go back to the schools and the gymnasiums. Mm -hmm. The adults called me after a week and said, Sensei, listen, <laughs> I'm like, okay, what do you mean? He's like, well, I'm with my family at home. What do you, what do you want me to do? I got the kids. I got the wife. We got to train. I said, all right, let's train. Come to the house. and. Uh, Somebody asked, you go in a family member's house and you stay in here. <laughs> and we just trained. We trained the whole time. I, I'm not a Zoom person. I can't teach Zoom to just kind of keep my dojo open and running. Uh, I just, you know, it's totally different uh, way of teaching yeah. Zoom than hands-on. I like, like the physical. I don't, I don't mind getting punched in the face and I punch you in the throat. I don't care. <laughs> I love that. You know, it's just, I'll kick in the head. <laughs> uh, it, you know, it's kind of rare, this type of Aikido, but I like it. I don't mind getting beat up <laughs> even now. So I love it. It can still be done with love. Actually, I, it, I, I did it, it, a, yeah. in, an interview earlier today, and we were, we were talking about the difference between me striking you with a lot of force, with the intent that we both get better Versus I could strike you with half the force with malintent and it's, it's a whole different experience. And, and most of us who've been training a while know what it's like to get rocked in the face by someone who wasn't trying to harm you, but was trying to challenge you. Absolutely. And it doesn't hurt as much Absolutely. as someone who is trying to hurt you. Absolutely. I agree. hundred percent. hundred percent. But I, I, you know, I, I I was hoping I could be truthful and open up. Yeah, I'm glad you about right. Aikido, um, because I, I think this is the place to do it. I, um, I think you've changed. I think you will have changed some opinions and likely opened some minds to I Aikido. So. And I suspect there will be some people who want to follow up with you, maybe learn more about your school. You know, we've got a pretty strong reach in New England. So yeah. if people want to get a hold of you, how would they do that? Uh, they can go online, aikidoofbristolcounty.com, uh, or they can call 508-542-9437. Uh, uh, email me, call me, um, send a bird with a note on its leg to my <laughs> dojo, whatever, however you want to do it. Um, you know, we're open to anyone that's willing to, to train and just be open-minded and, and uh, to the self-defense that we're doing, the Aikido style that we're doing. So we're going to wrap up. What are your final words to the people listening? Be happy, train hard, make it work. Be happy at what you're doing. Uh, you can cross train. I, I believe in that. Pick one art that you love and continue and do it as a life choice because I do this. It's my life. I don't just do it as a hobby. And, and yeah, get better at it. Keep training. Absolutely. Be happy. Back in the intro, I mentioned that this episode was going to potentially make you think differently about something. And here we are in the outro. You've listened to the episode. I'm going to be surprised if anybody's opinion of Aikido is the same. Even if you were familiar with John, even if you're familiar with the same understanding of Aikido that he has, the way he spoke of it, the passion, I, I just have a completely different perspective. And I think it's important to say that I still don't think anything ill of Aikido of any flavor. I am as passionate in supporting everyone 
in how they train and why they train, regardless of what those things are. But the fun part for me is the ability to look at it in a different way. Oh, but if we do this, oh, cool. I love having my mind blown. And I've got a feeling that came through, maybe not. But I was sitting here going, oh, that's pretty cool. I want to thank Shihan for coming on the show. So much fun. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being so passionate. And thank you for being willing to dig and find stuff that maybe goes against the grain. Go check out the show notes. You've got some of them in your podcast player, but the full list, because podcast players don't list everything, is at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And if you come shortly after release, 734 will be on the homepage. If it's not, to search for it. Lots of good stuff over there. You can sign up for the newsletter while you're there. Uh, we don't talk about this often, but there's a place where you can tip us. If you would rather do that instead of buying something, that's an option through PayPal. But if you want to support us in, in other ways, you know, you, you've got so many ways. We try to make it easy. We've got the Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. We've got books you can buy on Amazon, stuff you can buy at whistlekick.com. There's just, there's a lot going on over there. You can even have me come in and teach a seminar at your school. I do some stuff kind of differently, a little bit against the grain too, but in a really fun and complimentary way to what you're already doing and what your students are already doing. If you know someone that we should have on the show for a topic we should look at on a Thursday episode, I hope you'll write in. Jeremy at whistlekick.com. Our social media is at whistlekick. And you can find us on pretty much any platform you could imagine. We've come to the end. So until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.